go ahead and go this way. Sing the song there. And um, maybe we'll just do a little bit of expository preaching, thinking here, maybe thinking out loud. Uh, chapter 23. We'll start at verse 13. You know, he, he was before Pilate. And um, it's more, maybe more of a, an Easter message, but we'll get a little close, right? Uh, Luke 23, starting verse 13, says, And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things, whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him. And lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity he must he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, release unto us Barabbas, who for certain sedition made in the city and for the mur mur and for murder was cast into, into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that, they, that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him for released unto, unto them him that had that for sedition and murder was cast into prison whom they had desired but he delivered Jesus into their will and as they led him away they laid hold upon Simon one Simon was a serene coming out of the country and on him they laid the cross and he that he might bear it after Jesus and there and there followed him a great company of people and of, and of women which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming, in the which they shall call, they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps that never gave suck. Then, then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. When they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the, and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots, and the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. He be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription was written over in him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which, was hanged, which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. And the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art the same, thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of, the, of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And I, I'm going to stop right there and, and and I was just thinking about the, the song I sang, some of the testimonies, and, uh, you know, thinking about what Jesus did for us. You know, uh, 
it wasn't the nails that held him there. He was innocent. He was an innocent man. That was the, the, the Pilate, it, it, you read the story there, and, and the people wanted him crucified. Pilate knew he was innocent. Mm -hmm. Pilate knew, he said, I find no fault in him at all in, in, in another place in the script, scripture. Uh, but because the people said, uh, his, his blood be upon us and upon our children, well, he has been. You know, think about what the Jews have went through down through the years uh, since then. You know, think about the Holocaust, think about everything that happened, and people don't like to talk about that, but that's a... He said, they said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Uh, you know, there's, there's going to be trouble for them uh, as, long as, as long as we're here on this earth. But, you know, I'm so thankful for what Jesus did, that he, that he went to the cross. He went willingly. He didn't have to. Uh, you know, even as they nailed him to the, to the tree there, uh, in, in verse 34, it says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Uh, you know, and you know, as he hung there on the cross, he still uh, was asking for forgive, asking the people, asking God to forgive the ones that even nailed him to the cross. There's a song that one of the primers sang that uh, Jeff uh, Talbert sings. You know, uh, I was that soldier. I think's what it was called. He, he had a dream that uh, that he was the soldier that nailed Jesus to the cross. Uh, you know, truly. Our sin is what did nail him to the cross uh, because of what we did. It wasn't, he was innocent. He was, he was perfect. He was righteous. You and I are sinful and unrighteous. And he knew that God required a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice. And he was the only way that you and I could go to heaven. Therefore, he went to the cross of Calvary willingly. You know, I believe from the moment he was born, he knew what he was going to be doing. As he lay in that manger, he was God in the flesh from the moment he was born. From the moment he was conceived in Mary's womb, uh, I believe as he lay in that manger crying as a babe, he knew what he was there for. Uh, he knew what he had come to do. And this was the culmination as he went to the cross of Calvary. He was doing his father's will. What was his will? That he would go and pay the sin debt for all of mankind, not just for one not just for a few, but for all of mankind. And John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Our sins were laid upon him when he went to the cross of Calvary, and he died for us there upon the cross of Calvary. He paid our debt, not his debt, our debt, when he went to the cross of Calvary. And, and you know, as, as we read on down there, it says, they said, uh, verse 36, it says, And the soldiers also mocked him, uh, coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. I'm glad that he didn't. It goes back to that song. You know, he could have. He could have said, I'm done with this. But he didn't because he loved us. You know, because he loved me, he went to the cross of Calvary. Because he loved you, he went to the cross of Calvary. You know what? It doesn't just extend to the people that are sitting in this church. You can go to anybody on the streets of Charleston. I don't care what they've done. Uh, he loved them, and he went to the cross of Calvary. You can think of somebody that's committed this crime or that crime. People say, well, that person's going to hell because of the crime that they committed. Hey, uh, their sin is because of the crime they committed, but they're going to hell because they reject Jesus Christ. Right. And, you know, people, we, the world can't comprehend that. They can't comprehend the forgiveness of God. You know, that God forgives us, uh, you know, and, it, and, this, and it's when he forgives, he forgets. You and I will look at somebody that's done us wrong and say, well, I forgive them. And in the back of our mind, say, not really. You know? yeah. you know, but I'll never, I forgive them, but I'll never forget. Uh, you know, but God forgave us and he forget. Uh, and he, not because he, he's forgetful, but because he chose to. The Bible says he casts our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. As far as the east is from the west. And you and I can't comprehend that. We think about east and west. People say, well, if you go to the east, eventually, if you went all the way around the world, you'd be back here. But we're talking about in a straight line as far as the east is from the west. And it will never, ever touch. Uh, you know, he, he cast our sins away as far as the east is from the west. How can he do that? Because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Because Jesus paid the debt. He paid the debt that you and I owe. Uh, he could have come down. He could have saved himself. Uh, verse 37 again says, And saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Now they wrote that to mock him. 
But he was the king of the Jews and is the king of the Jews. He's king of kings and lord of lords is who he is. Uh, it says, And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. You know, he had the wrong attitude. He wasn't worried about uh, anything but being getting down off the, you know, if you're the Christ, save us. And then the other one says, But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? We indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the very next verse says, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto, unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. People try to make salvation so complicated. What do you got to do to be saved? Ask Jesus to come into your heart. What did the, 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 the thief on the cross hear? People say, Well, you got to do this and you got to do that. And you got to work uh, you know, to get saved. Or what, what works did the thief have on the cross? He had none. He didn't have an opportunity to work. He didn't have an opportunity to serve. He didn't have an opportunity to get baptized. He said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Why? Because he said, Lord, remember me. What he was doing is he was, he was, he recognized his sin. And if you go back, he said, we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. He recognized he was a sinner. And he knew that Jesus was, was the Savior. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Uh, you know, what he was saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, remember me. He said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. You know, how the world has perverted the gospel and said, well, you got to work to get to heaven. You, you know, you, you can, it's, they'll say, well, salvation is by grace, but then you have to work to keep it. You know, there's all kinds of different things. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God. It's simple. Just accept the gift that God is offering. Uh, you know, the Philippian jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas told him, says, Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. What are you believing upon? You believe in that he went to the cross of Calvary, and he paid your debt. That he rose again the third day. Uh, and he sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Hey, we're not, we're not worthy of heaven. There's not a single person in here that's worthy of heaven. But because of what Jesus did, he made us worthy. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Every single one of us. You know, what is our righteousness? The Bible says it says filthy rags. The very best that we can do is never going to be good enough to get us to heaven. So what do we need to do? We need to exchange our righteousness for his. And that's what we do when we accept him as, a, as our personal Savior. And we ask him to come into our heart. Jesus said, okay, give me your righteousness, that filthiness, that sinfulness. Here, you can have my righteousness. That's the perfect sinlessness. When God, you know, I sing another song that says, when he sees me, he sees the blood of the lamb. He doesn't see me as I am. When he looks upon us, a person that's saved, I mean, you might see all my faults and, and all my failures and all the shortcomings that I have in my life. But when God looks at me, he sees the righteousness of his son, Jesus. He doesn't see anything else. And that's how we're going to get to heaven. Not because of anything that we've done, but because of what Jesus did. We're going to stand before him robed in his righteousness, not ours. It's him. It's what he did. And that's the only thing that will get us to heaven. You know, think about Easter. You know, the world is all worried about, are you going to buy candy? Are you going to buy this? And I'm, I'm, I'm not against the Easter egg hunt. I'm not against a cookout. I'm not against all the things. Hey, that's an opportunity to get people here so we can tell them about Jesus. Uh, but it's not about the Easter eggs. It's not about the Easter bunny. It's not about all the, 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 the candy and different things. It's about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the world is, you listen to what the world has to say about Easter. You never hear Jesus mentioned. But Easter is about Jesus. Easter is about what he did for us on the cross of Calvary, that he died for us, died for our sins, was buried for three days, and on the third day rose again for our justification. And you can be saved by simply asking him to come into your heart and save you. Didn't make it hard. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's how simple salvation is. Let's give a song of invitation if you're here this morning. You have a need. We want to invite you to come.
in a good service and a good spirit here this morning. God wants you just as you are. You know, you don't have to turn over a new leaf. He'll take you just as you are, page 207.